Hi guys, Charlie Tango One coming at you here with a, a leather video. Um, there's a lot of people who uh, tend to prefer that, apart from the other things that I do. I uh, turn me into anything. Uh, this one is a, a tutorial that a gentleman wants me to um, video it as I go, which I don't normally do, I only do bits of that. But um, He's just getting in the leather trade and he wants to have a go himself at doing this stuff. Um, I don't think he's in the UK, but I can't be sure. Anyway, so to start off with, um, to do these round um, training collars, and that's all they are, a training collar, they're not a, a conventional uh, a walking collar where, where you can yank and crank it. You don't do that with these. Uh, they're totally different. Um, they have a long line on them uh, and it's for training on grass really, not concrete as you're, you're just not the swivels out. Right now the first thing you need is some belting leather, which is what this stuff is, belting leather, okay? And it comes in a coil, I think it's about oh, 10, I think it's 30 yards long, but I warn you it is expensive, very expensive. Uh, hence why you have to sell these at the price I do. Now, first thing you want to do is get yourself a piece cut off. This is for a, a, a little cocker. You want a piece cut off at 32 uh, inches, all right? Now when you've done that, I just chamfer off, taper off, the end. That's all, just do a little bit like that. That's all we need. Oops. Uh, I warn you, this is going to be a long video. I might do it in two parts. There it is, I chamfered it off, see? Just, just takes that little bit off. It's for when you fold it back like that. It will sit down on there like that. Okay, that's the idea of it. Now, having done that, we now need to put, oh, I do anyway, I put a little bit of glue on it. And the reason I do that is because I want to um, flatten it a little bit wider but before I actually put the glue on you can get your ruler again and you measure halfway along that six inches the first one is six inches um, and you scive it down or split it down to um, look like this which I've done a short piece of you're taking the you're taking the head off uh, a piece off of it like that then round the other way turn it off and you take the other piece off the other side so you're ending up with a, a flat piece of that okay so that's six inches long you measure off And then you measure that piece again this time you mark it off at three inches I do both sides because um, at least you got it then haven't you that's it so you've marked it off like that Okay, do the same on the other end. Hello, so we've chamfered off just on the very end so it'll sit down flush. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of glue on there. 
and I'll just let it go off for a few minutes. Um, I use this brush. I leave my brushes. I leave my brushes soaked in um, thinners. Um, in one of these, one of these tubs. Is it one of those tubs you get off a spray can or something, you know. And um, you can just stand them in that. It keeps them supple. Otherwise, you've got a hell of a job having to clean this brush out afterwards. So now I'm gonna. I'm hoping you can see all this. I have to keep looking at the camera to make sure that you can see it. I just put this glue on here, both sides. This glue you can get from uh, it's a contact glue. I get mine from Abbey Saddlery. Um, there are other, other companies that do it, but I have an account at Abbey, and that's that's what I that's what I use. So, and what I do is I'll, I'll, I'll pick up the can in a minute, and I'll show you um, what it looks like, and that way you know you're getting the right can. They've got a, their website, and they can. Um, you can just look at their what they got metalwork, glues, um, leathers, all sorts of stuff. Now I'm just going to put this over to dry off a bit. I'll just hang it over my machine to let it go off a bit. Now, next stage is while that's drawing there I don't put me uh, brass um, back in the, in the pot um, I just leave it on the mat like that because I'm going to be using it shortly just leave it on the mat and that'll do it right now <coughs> what I'm going to do is Get a piece of leather. This is a grade leather or panel leather, supple and everything. You know, it's not a, a conventional leather like like this. This is a proper leather. This one, all right. Hide if you like. Anyway, I've got that and I cut it two and a half inches wide. All right. But when you're cutting a piece off, you might do it five inches, and then you can work, get on your workbench and cut it down to two and a half. Now these um, are quite fairly, but even if it's a half hide, they still come big. So if you've got plenty of room for a workbench, great, mate. Right. So there we go. I've cut this one. I'm just going to cut this down to 30, 32 when I put the uh, belting leather on. It's a round belting leather and it's eight millimeters wide. I use the natural. If they do it in black and brown, um, but for some reason it's really hard. But if you get the natural one, it's quite supple, which is what you need to be able to manipulate the job. Uh, right, so that being done, what I now do is I'll get my staple gun, one of these, and I'll staple it right to the end of my um bench. I've got some uh, what's the name? I don't know what that stuff is, but it's um it protects your knife when you're cutting on it rather than you know anything else it the knife will cut into it rather than blunting your knife. Well, oh, but do some on this end as well. That's it, that's that done. Now, 
while I wait for that to usually I'll cut a piece of leather I have split it right through because sometimes it comes out a bit thick like you're trying trying to bend that leather is a little bit hard you know what I'm saying so I split it down and I cut it oh I cut it five eighths wide and it needs to be about four inches long um, this is for the stopper so you can do that while you're waiting for the paint to dry <laughs> um, and as I say I'm not dead serious when I when I uh, explain things I just get on and do it and what you see is what you get right I'm just trying to think what's the next stage to do um, Got that done, I can't do nothing till it's dry. I'm going to do a bit of banging in a minute um, to flatten that. Let's have a look and see how flat it's got. Oh, don't think I've done that solid actually, so that's a bit silly, wasn't it? You see what I mean by um, when it's all dried up. Let's uh, chuck some on there to finish it off with that brush. Right, put it up there to, to dry. <laughs> Again, I could I could speed it up and do it. Right, I'm just going to start me a hot air blower, so bear with me for a minute or two. See if I can smack it down a bit. Metal anvil I've got here. I suppose we'll bring it down here so you can see really. Alright, and I'm gonna just smash it a bit so it flattens it. first started making these and that is unless you do flatten that down a bit keep it my head on that pot unless you flatten these down a bit they um they won't fold over on, on its their cells very very well I'll put that on for a minute no I won't I'll take it off Right, next stage again is, this is just an old bit of leather I've used to, um, so don't get, it, get all the glue on the, on the bench. Now, I'm going to change that over to the wider brush, more supple brush. It's a half inch paint brush really, that's all it is. You don't have to get a proper, um, Don't have to get a proper glue uh, 
brush. Now what I'm going to do is this glue, that's what I was going to show you, it does have a very strong vapour. So you might want to do it somewhere else. This is the glue I use. C Z nine four nine. Okay, comes in a little pot. You can get bigger ones, but you don't want a bigger one. And uh, that's where you get it from. Okay. And you say other other leather supplies uh, probably stock it and sell it. Don't know, but right now. You've got to be quite liberal with this glue. And what I do is I just put it on this end for now. And then on the other end. So I can put that uh, belt and leather on. You might find that this uh, does soak the glue up quite a lot, but uh, you've got to do it so I'm now putting this glue on right the way across the bit of leather. Slow process like as they like watching paint dry. I kept the, uh, the camera fairly close because um, oh, I soaked that in like I don't know what there. You know, if it's too, if it's too far away, you're not going to see hardly anything of. Uh, you know, just think, oh, I can't quite see that. I wish you could uh, zoom it in a bit so I'll get a closer look. So, there we go, that's that, that bit done. That won't take long to dry. Don't forget to put your glue look pot lid on every time. Otherwise, you'll learn the other way like I did. And knocks it bloody flying and you got glue all over your bench then you only do it once <laughs> right that's that done now just let that go off for a bit I'll just get a couple of um, the hardware that you're going to need now because this is a, a, a cocker um, I use a slightly smaller swivel but the same size ring um, obviously being a cocker they're a little bit you know obviously smaller we don't want the standard one I'll get the pair out so you can see them both That's the one inch ring. And that will go on for the cocker and the springer. That is, oh, let's get it right. That's the swivel, what I call the standard swivel, that's for the springer. Now this is for the cocker, 
Right, I'll put them spicy so you can see the difference, variation size. Okay, now I'm going to be using the cocker one. Now, just for reference, I think it's three quarter. This will not go through this ring. Alright, so you must put this ring on and this on the other end uh, before you loop it. So once you put this on, the ring on, then you thread the rest of the collar through that ring, then you can put that swivel on. But this small swivel, it's a beauty, being a small swivel for cockers, this swivel goes through there. So you can put the whole job together without having to um, struggle putting the other bit on. Which I'll show you later in the video um, as an example um, so you understand what I'm saying on that one. So we'll come back to that bit. Right, this might be dry enough now, so let's see if we can put a, a wash thing on here. Right, you put that right at the beginning, right in the middle, right? Little tap down. And I put me little anvil on there. That holds that down then. Then make sure it's not twisted. Do the same at the other end. That's what I've just done to this end, all right? All right, that's that done. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna glue it. So, plenty liberal gluing on your brush. Just give it a little bit of a roll. You get on the underside of it. It's just about when it's got to be glued all over. And then what I do is I've got an old bit of um, masking tape. It's an old reel and it's, it's no good, it's all stuck together. But I use that just to keep this belting leather away from the, um, the leather, just enough for it to go off. See what I mean in a minute when I get there. Nearly finished. Right, here it is. Old one. It's had its day. Pick up the belt and leather, put it roughly in the middle for a minute or two. Put your cap on your glue. Let it draw off a little bit. And then um, we'll have a go. You can use your heat gun if you want. And um, which I do. Um, Small shed. 
you want to have the like the Sonic, especially the Sam, you know, Sonic Time, it's all right, Winter Time. I added some windows or something because the fumes, <coughs> when you put this heat gun on it, oh, it does get hot. Now, what you do is you find the middle and you just keep put, putting that down into the middle, making sure it's not twisted. And I soak. Now, you can see this up to a point, but I'll show you what I'm going to actually do. I'm just going to fold that up. What I do is I have my fingers underneath like that on the leather. And then I put one finger in front of those two. And I... I lift the I lift the job up. I lift it up so that I can get that leather to go in there like so. And the reason I do that is so I know that the leather is going against that belting leather on the underside here. And then what I do is I just uh, get these somewhere in the middle. Push it around slowly. Like this. Just put the two edges together. And at this point, you want to make sure you're holding or pulling the leather a bit. I'll show you why in a minute. And here we go, I'll show you it now. This is what happens if you don't pull it. Now I'm pulling it at the moment, so you can do that with it. But if I don't, look what happens. No matter which way you do it, it, it bends, buckles. So I just keep it taut. And I dig my, dig my nails in either side. Because you want that seam on the top. You'll get the hang of it. You might mess the first one or two up, but hey, you've got to start somewhere, haven't you? Right, once I've done that, I'll just pull them out. I've got to turn this heat off, it's getting a little bit too warm. There we go, that's that. What I do is I'll, I'll cut that off because I don't need that excess bit. Level with the end of the belt and leather, like that. Get that, get that nail through that in in that groove here. Like that. That's if you've got nails. If you haven't, you'll have to use a um. One of these. To do it. Now I turn it over and I put my thumb now in that one. You've got to make sure that this bit here, turn it over, that this bit here is glued properly. Only go up to that six inch marker there, alright? Right, that's that. Now, your next job. You go up to this mark here, the halfway mark. But you get yourself in the middle between the six inch mark 
and 3 inch. Go roughly in the middle and just angle it to go to that 3 inch mark. I'll show you. Like that. Alright. And then what you do is you can run your scissors along there. Like that. So you end up with that. Okay. Do the same the other side. Now I turn mine over this way so I can see roughly that you've got that. Let's get it right. Alright, so you've got a V. There. Am I, am I getting it? Yeah, see so so it looks like that. Okay, you take this, oh, just take this piece off. I'm going to give it a break in a minute there because I'm going to go in and have myself a cup of coffee. There's your waist. So you now got a piece of leather looking like that. Okay. You say the other end. Same principle. Cut that really tight to that um, belting leather. It's somewhere near even, like that. And then just, just for reference, just fold that little bit over a little there, not right over, and just see if it's going to marry up with both sides, like that. Alright, now this side looks a little bit long to me, so it's going to take a dear little bit off. That's it, so they match because that's going to be folded over onto there so you want it to look um, like that basically. Can you see that? You want it to go over there like that. Right, that's that done. And that done. So I'm going to go in and have myself a cup of coffee. So make sure this this piece is well stuck down because right guys we're bringing you back to be. with round two or part two right. which is uh, putting a ring on here yeah now, that's in the part one the car gets you back in a minute you know I, that soak that, soak that up that glue like a good one. So I've only been on five minutes. Let's uh, just see what we can do here with enlightening it or something. That's it, I'll do the other end while I'm at it. that quick blow Shit. 
Right, I'll get the range, excuse my sniffing. Suffering this eye fever a lot, I think. Right, now, uh, if you see what I'm doing, I'm bending that over. This ring is roughly going to be where that second blue mark is. And this is going to go to the six inch mark. So I put that on there like that. And then I usually hold that with the thumb, that bit. And uh, I then pull this, but keeping it in line with the one underneath, like so. Then you can get the uh, It's nicely in line with it now, look. Okay. And I usually get a pair of what's names on here. See it closes up that tiny little gap. I'll make sure can you see it? That tiny little gap there. Just put a bit of pressure on it for a minute. And there you go. It's held it. Alright. Now, do the other end. Bearing in mind, this is a for a cocker, so this swivel will go through the ring. I do tend to pull this this way a bit, so that. Um, doesn't stretch anymore. As it do the same with that, pinch that up so that hole's nicely closed up. Give it a smack down with the hammer. Hello like so. Now what I'm gonna do is Bear with me because I don't want to keep moving the camera but I'm just going to go on the machine and uh, run some stitches through this while we mow. <coughs> oh. Right, first things first, here we go, let's get that one on. Oh. Well, I double stitch this. I'm happy with that, I'm 
jobs where Just snip my needle, so should have got it. I'm still here, I'm still... Oh, yeah. Right, now I've got my needle turned that off. Sorry about that delay there. <coughs> We're now going to just fold that. I stitched it while I was replacing right. the needle as well. Just going to fold that like that. Bring it back in a second. Bring this down here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to smack that edge. I'm going to smack this edge here. Then turn it over and I'm going to do the same again. So we've got a nice... Nice little... Now... Hopefully what we can do is we can get this to fold over with that one. And now what I do is I just run my nail down here, both sides. Hope I'm keeping it in shot here. That goes down here both sides. It looks like that. Okay. Do the same this side. I've already smacked that down so it's close, but no, I don't know. That's it. Do the same again there. That one's sitting high. Just cut that off a bit. We put the same again, push these to go so they're in the middle basically, like that. Squeeze them, I tend to pull them that way when I'm doing it. So 
it was sitting there nice and it was sitting that side nice as well hopefully oh, and this in fact is a someone's collar that I'm making for them so the order just came in the other day paid for now so I thought right what I'll do is I'll uh, do a tutorial on it while um, at the same time right I've got that in there nice so what we're going to do now again I'm going to have to leave you leave you pondering or wondering bear with me I'll probably me snatch Because what I have to do now is run a stitch along there. Alright, run a stitch along there. But I start with the um at this end because I've got to run my foot, piping foot's got to run along there. So bear with me, you'll hear the machine going and uh <coughs> we'll see how we get on. Maybe there. Don't fall asleep.
Alright, we just cut off the thread. Machined. Okay, machined it for you now. Right down to there. Now, the next stage is to cut this waste off. Now, you need to be oh, good at doing this. Sharp scissors as well. Coffee's going cold, look. Oh, right. Now, hope you can see this. For some reason, I cut on the underside, the understitch. Make sure you keep this not up there, not down there, completely level, like flat. And you can put your finger in here like I'm doing, and it guides you. You can see the stitch, so you don't want to go too close. Can you see that? Hang on. See that? Don't want to go too close, but close enough so you ain't got a load of waste on there. I hope I get this finished. Well, it'll be finished today. And uh, I'm not going to rush to get down to the post office. Uh, I'll post it in the morning. And a young lady will get it this week anyway, so not a problem. You'll soon know if you're cutting the stitches, because you'll feel the scissors going sort of uh, 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 biting at it. And you're thinking, oh, I think I'm cutting through the stitch there. So you've gone too close. So, if you've done that, you want to stop there and just restitch it. If you've got a machine, it's great. If not, I'm afraid you're going to have to do it by hand. And it's going to take a while. But the important thing is, I'll just finish this up and uh, I'll explain and show you. See, I tend to, I don't know why, but I just, I like to give it a stretch. Right, <coughs> as you can see, that ring 
will be running along here like that it will run along that edge it's not going to be going that way because that is the dog's neck so that's the way it's going to be going all right it will be going like that now I'll show you a little trick if you happen to do it like this with a standard Just let me get a standard uh, ring I'll get a ring if you forget to put this through onto here onto here not to worry because the standard won't go through there but you can bend this like that and you can bend that that way and you can get your bridle in there and round there both sides like that and once you've pulled that through you're laughing no problem at all but because this is only a little uh, cocker one we can do it like this so we just push that through there yeah, Bob's your uncle finish you up. Job done, nice little slip collar. Look. So now what we do, see it, see it running on there now? Runs on there lovely. Oh. What do you do there? I thought I had. No, obviously I've used it. Right, thinking not out here. Not surfing me coffee. <coughs> now we get this little bit of leather that we said earlier on, three quarters of an inch, uh, five eighths wide. And I've only split it not halfway, but I've, I've just taken a bit off. If I marry them two together. You can see how thick they were together, all right? So I'm only taking a little bit off of the back, not the front. Now, because <coughs> I can't get two out of this, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to do one. And to do that, I'll get hold of that. Put plenty of glue on there, turn it around, and put some on there. Let that dry off a bit. Now I don't think I need the glue for anything else, so I'll be putting that brush back on there. <coughs> Close your lid on your glue, most important. If it starts to get a bit too thick you can uh, use some thinners, paint paint thinners and get it from like Ford's, they do it by the gallon or whatever. Um, that's what I had to do last time because um, Lidl's, they usually sell this stuff. Universal, universal thinners. That's what it looks like. It's a very thin lid. Um, one litre. Um, it's not very. Oh, I'm gonna have to move that. I'll keep it in my head on that. It's not very expensive, but bear with me. No, it's not going to go on there. Okay. Oh. I'll sort it in a minute. It's not very expensive, but it's um. Don't get it in littles very often. They might have half a dozen tins in there. Well, if you see half a dozen tins in littles and you're all going to be doing quite a bit of leather work, I suggest you grab every tin. <laughs> so I've got I've got that one. I just started. 
and uh, actually that's my last tin so no I ain't got one more there yeah got one more tin there so that'll last me a fair old time right I'll just let this paint this glue dry a bit so while that's doing that um, I'll get this down And now I'm going to get me, me punches down. Rivets. Another little trick. I have used some of this before now actually. Yeah. This is snowproof weathering, weatherproofing. I put this up here so you can see. Okay. It's only a small tub though, look. <coughs> but you can get round that. Get these little jars. And you get them on eBay for, I think. Six pound for half a dozen, I think. Or any little jar that's got oh, what else do I have in here? Horseradish in, horseradish, anything like that. Keep the jars, clean them out, <coughs> make yourself a bit of leather balm. Now, to make the leather balm. Off there, let's put it down there. Put that over there because I'm fed up with that. Keep. That's it. Now, to make a leather balm, what you do is you can go on eBay or you can go anywhere and you can get some beeswax, a block of beeswax. They do them in a one ounce block. Um, and uh, I think you can get about four or five for about three quid, something like that. It's cheap stuff, but, um, you know, it's cheap enough, but it's pure beeswax. Even, uh, some of them say it's um, naturally scented, some say it's uh, um, purified or something. Either way, get yourself some for the silly little money, because... Buying it, buying it this way is expensive. So, without further ado, you get these little jars. I've got another little one here that I've just taken. Just brag from the kitchen from the wife. What's this one? Okay. Buttons. Oh, don't say what it is. Take that off. Put that on there. Where are we? Make sure it's dry. I always use some um, a tissue rather than <coughs> rather than a towel. Tissue sucks it all up. Right, you've got all that out, and if you get the label on there, just get a, a coarse scouring pad. Those, you know, the metal ones you get, and just that, just soak that for a few minutes. And it just all just fall off for you. That's all you want, a little jar that size. Okay. Now, <coughs> once you've got this blue block of wax, it's one ounce it weighs. You can put one and a half blocks in if you want. But I put one block in. And... It brings it up to that level there. One block and one of these spray can lids. Simple. Now what you do, oh, I'll give you all my secrets away. 
you get some neat foot oil. Alright? Now you can get that in moles, which used to be called scats. So you get that in there and you fill this little tub up. No, it don't have to be right to the brim, but at least at least it's up to these marks or something, you know. Throw that in there, get yourself a little tray, baking tray, blank it from the wife if you can. One of these, that'll do. Bear with me, I'm just going to put this on here because I think it's ready. Point you blow his nose, just pinch it nice and tight up against that. Yep. And I usually give it a quick hammer. That's the stop on. So it's got a rivet it in a minute but I don't cut that off until I've riveted it right that's that done so having got this little tray for your wax you put it on a little burner you don't want a great deal of heat on it uh, just a small amount and tend to have a pair of leather gloves or something because you're going to have to keep moving it away from the heat like you know as you I start smoking and then the next stage is it a catch light you don't want that you just want it to melt it so once you've melted that wax in there one block you might want to put a block and a half in it doesn't really matter and um, that cap full of needs for oil or you could use um, what's the other one if you can get it. Ooh. Coconut oil. Liquid. Or, uh, what was the other one? Next to oh, coconut oil. Uh, raw, raw linseed oil, boiled linseed oil. Uh, or, oil seed rape into this little tub you could go for this oil seed rape I think it'll be fine um, and then you just mix it it might start to solidify when you put that in there but what you do is you just mix it around or oh, excuse me one of these little skewers these little uh, barbecue skewers and mix it about a bit or if you've got an old piece of wood or a bit of this, you know, and just mix it around. Um, once it's all melted in, get hold of your jar. Don't use a funnel to, to uh, put it in there. Just get it, just get it straight like that and pour it in. Pour it in like that. Alright, all the way, all of it, and then stand, stand it down level, don't rattle it around. Then, I stood mine on my little vice, my little anvil there, and it, uh, it soon dries because it solidifies very quickly. Um, and, but if you get it too hot, you only want it so it's just melted it, that's all. Once it's melted it, just give it a good mix so it's all mixed together with the oil. And then pour it in there. And then just keep it somewhere still. And it, within five, oil, ten minutes, you can see it all no, going creamy, all punch. solidifying. Right, I'll use a bit of that actually in a minute, just to show you. Number three right, punch. Oh, 
through. Fairly close to the hole, half right to the leather. You see that? When you punch it in there, you want to rivet it. Um, from the top side, obviously, because it's a tape of punch. Uh, the cap will sit in it. But see, do that one. It's a tight fit. It goes in, but you've got enough gap there, just there, to put this cap in, and it'll sit in there. Oh, like so. Okay. And then what you do you, is you get it on the edge of the anvil, and you one, two, three. That's what I give. Three wax, all right, and it's on. Close that up there, shut that. Then we get hold of our roller blade and cut it. So that it's about that length. What's going on here? That's what you want. You want it so it's about that length. Okay. I'll give you a measurement if you're worried. From the end, once you punched it, put the uh, rivet in. It's three quarters of an inch from the centre of the rivet. So it's three quarters of an inch. From there to the end. Okay, if you want to be precise, but what I also do is I just cut the, um, the corners off. Like so. Okay, that's that done. Another important factor, every time you use one of these roller blades, right, you just slide it up, slide it down, slide it up to use it, slide it down to lock it, you can't get cut. Whatever you do, don't forget to slide that down so you cover that blade. They are so mega sharp, you can shave with them, they're that sharp, and you've only got to touch it on your hand like that and it will cut. You just, what are doing that? Ter terrible. Now what you might need to do is get one of these brattles and push it in where that um, where the seam is. In there. Alright. That's just in case the glue is stuck in there. Now you get a bit of. You can try a bit of this. Let's try a bit of this. See what it does. I'm not happy with that cut. It's not even. It's not even. That's better. That's what it's like. It's like a paste. Put it in there, I'm going to put that on there, put that in there. Theoretically, 
that will move. All right. Now a little bit tight, but there you go. So you've got yourself some balm there. Show you what it does. Get a bit on there. Rub it on there. Can you see that? And it actually feeds your leather. Alright. You can put a hot gun on it if you want, but the idea is it waterproofs it, look. Brilliant, isn't it? And there's no real strong smell to it at all. So, there you are. That's how you knock up a bit of balm. I'm going to finish up this because this tub's nearly empty. So, I'll finish up using it. Even this looks... Uh, to me, this looks more like a, uh, how can we say, Vaseline. <laughs> That's what it tends to look like, a bit like. Right, so we need a dual toe part there. <laughs> uh, it is important to put this this on the collar, and you you need to um, lubricate it quite often, or waterproof it, I should say, just to keep. Because if you're out in the field, especially grass, it's going to start getting wet quick, isn't it? So you just make sure you've got enough. Uh, waterproof on here so that it, it, do, it doesn't soak up the water you know it repels it which is what you want it to do you don't really want it to suck up water it's defeating the object isn't it anyway that's that there done I think there you go that one's lovely now okay I always bring it down roughly to the dog's neck that's it. One slip collar, all complete. Another point I tend to do is I bend that so that, that shapes like that with the rest of the collar. See? Just my preference, that's all. Make sure when you pull it, make sure that this, this here is running true. So the, the ring is always on that edge, not on the inside. If you don't keep checking it, that will that might that might turn, and that ring will be rubbing on there then, which you don't want. So, without further ado, that's that one done, isn't it? Get plenty of wax in that thread there as well. Yeah. Helps prevent mildew, dry rot, salt stains and scuff marks. For best results apply a light coat when leather is clean, dry and warm. Wipe off excess not recommended for suede and may darken light colours. Which we all know really doesn't it? It speaks for itself. Right, I'm going to hang that up 
put it on there so you can see the finished article, couldn't we? Hey, there it is. That's the finished article. Um, that can go up on there. I'll put that back up there now. That's my little survival pot. That is. I've got everything in there, like so. All I've got to do is grab myself a bit of, I don't know, a couple of potatoes, some carrots, collie, uh, broccoli, whatever, like. I'll cook it all in there. Just cook the meat on the open fire. I do like my camping. But as I say, I'm getting on a bit now, so it's getting a bit hard to uh, to do. But I've got my nephew that comes with me. He keeps an eye on me because he knows I get breathless so quick because I've got anemic and all that other stuff. And you get to my age, 75, you start panting a bit. You think, well, what's up with me? I never used to pant. I've only got to walk up the road and I'm panting like a bloody dog. Still, there we go. That's not rabbiting on, that's just stating a fact. <laughs> Got that all done. That, that, that. That's done there. I don't know. I'd be inclined not to use Vaseline. Original petroleum jelly. Because I don't know if it would ignite. Uh, when you melting it in with the wax so I tend to leave that alone. Right, all we've got left now to do is what's the time eleven o'clock this oh just remembered I I've got to do a biothane Now this ain't just any old biothane, it's, it's expensive stuff. As I said, it's no point in cutting corners. You don't gain anything by it because, for one, it will snap. Uh, two, for any other reason, it, it could, you know. So, I don't know, this comes from America, you know, and it, and it ain't cheap. Sorry to say, but it ain't cheap. Right, what have we got here? One. Two. Right, so I just uh, working that one out. This is the biothane. There it is, you see, look, got American stamp on it. Now, what I'll do with this is put the uh, Bring them up. That's it. Just so 
a three mil, another three punch again. One three mil hole. And I've got the width of it. Yeah, a five five eight five eight clip, lunging clip. Small ones might do that actually. Yeah, small ones will do that better. Where are they? Oh, bear with me, I know I've got them somewhere. Get there in here, mate. I've got one of these, so I'm going to put it on. here right let's find out where they've gone I know I've got some somewhere mate so don't panic Mr Mannering well, what's these here This is the training lead that um, people would use when they're out in the field. So you can control 
your dog a bit better. Um, we had it running too far. Oh, I like to keep my dog about 15 feet to my left and 15 feet to the right or 20. Oh. Then you know, I'll get that in here in a minute. Then you know you've got it under control. That's it. A little bit of a pig to stay on that one. It's got there in the end. No. video oh, I'll go out that up later let's put that over there for now be on a training lead don't you that's the next thing now two bits of the Tigo leather I've already prepped them pre-prepped them this is for the uh, clip. Right there. Out of the way. Oh. Get rid of there. That's for the clip. And where's the one? The other one. <coughs> This is three quarters of an inch wide, this leather. Oh, it's a Latigo leather hide. I use the uh, edger for doing it down there, okay? And then on the other side, all right? Now, I do that down to 18 inches from the end, 18 inches to here and mark it. Sorry, to here and mark it. Then come back two and a half inches, and then on this end, you do that two and a half inches. You've got to split it halfway because that is then going to go on there like so. Just to have a little loop. The loop is not for your hand to go in, but it will do. But it's for you to get something to grab hold of. A lot of them don't bother with the lead, like the biothane, orange one. We don't bother with a handle loop. So that's that one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do them at a later date. Because I think we've done enough for now regarding... Um, Getting your collar done, that's what you wanted Wanted done. I've done it. And so, I'm going to call that it. Hope, uh, hope it's been informative to you. I can't think of the lad's name that wanted it done. But, um, you've got everything there. You can always stop the video, do a bit, and then, recon uh, then continue with the video stop and do that stage you can do it all in stages so without further ado i'll bid you all farewell and thanks very much for your patience uh, and watching me bye for now